Hello everybody, this is Dr. Aparna. How has your experience been at school? I am sure you must have all gone to school. There is a saying that throughout the world, children walk to school and run back home. Has it been true in your case? Well, in my case, I have always walked to school and I eagerly waited for the bell to ring to go back home. I really ran back home always. And that is the case with my daughter too. Why is there so much reluctance for children to go to school? Are they afraid of the number of books that they have to study? Or don't they get enough time to play in school? Or are the teachers really very strict? Or is the atmosphere in school very claustrophobic? How should school education be? Should it be filled with fun? With learning, should it only be learning? Should it be a strict atmosphere? Do the students expect the teachers to be friendly? Do they expect them to have a motherly attitude? Is a school home away from school? Well, these are many things that keep cropping up in our minds, especially when we talk about education. Today's lesson, a letter to a teacher, is about schools in Italy. This particular lesson was translated in the year 1970 by Nora Rossi and Tom Cole. Initially, this book was written by eight students of the school of Barbiana, which is situated in Tuscany, Italy. The school was set up by Lorenzo Milani. Lorenzo Milani realized that Children belonging to the public schools in Italy were either failed or they were discouraged from studying. Most of the students who failed went to work in the fields and they worked in the factories. Before going to Barbiana in the year 1954, Lorenzo Milani went to Calenzano in Florence. I must tell you that Lorenzo Milani was a journalist and also a priest and he had gone to Calenzano to be a priest. There he started a night school and he realized the importance of a good curriculum and encouragement. When he started teaching the students with a lot of encouragement, the results were totally different. When he came back to Tuscany, he started the school of Barbiana. The full name of the school was Santa Andrea de Barbiana. The school actually had very few students to start with. The school started with only 10 students and between the ages of 11 and 13 and later on this grew to be around 20. It was a very rigorous schedule that the students had to face. It was about 8 hours of work per day. But then they were discouraged by the teachers. They were not allowed to study. The conditions at their homes were also not very congenial for them to study. As we read this extract which you have for study, you will realize the pathetic conditions in which the students lived. And the students really wanted to study but they did not get that kind of atmosphere that they really needed. Lorenzo Milani realized all this and started a project with these students. Initially, as I said, there were about 11 to 13 students and they grew to about 20 students later on. The elder students taught the younger ones and then the project continued where they started writing their experiences in the form of a book under the guidance of Lorenzo Milani. In the year 1967, Milani died. But the moment he died, the school also closed the very year. The students wanted to give some credit to their teacher, Lorenzo Milani, and they brought out this book in Italian called A Letter to a Teacher. Letter to a Teacher became world famous. It became a hit. People read it through the length and breadth of the world. Everybody appreciated it. It was translated into many languages. And the book brought out the lacuna that existed in the education system that prevailed in Italy. 
it brought out the class bias that prevailed in the public schools that were there in Italy. The students brought forth this book in the form of a letter written by only one student. This was addressed to a teacher. It could have been any teacher in their school. Let us now see what the students had to write and who the students really were. The schoolboy authors of the letter to a teacher belonged to the peasant families in the Tuscan village. But then their situation is not true to just them. It can be true to any student in any part of the world. Therefore, the book has a lot of relevance in today also. When we see the condition of the students in India, especially those studying in rural areas where proper schools or proper educational facilities are not available, we can relate this book to them too. As I said, this book was written by eight students. Initially, it was written in Italian and later on translated into various other languages. In the year 1970, it was translated into English. This book brings out the angst and the anger, it brings out the problems that are associated with the students of the school of Barbiana. That is, the full name of the school was Santa Andrea de Barbiana. The school students faced a lot of problems at school. They were not given proper education by the teachers. They were failed. They were not given any encouragement by the teachers. And Lorenzo Milani felt very bad for that. And therefore, he started a project wherein the students wrote this book and published it after his death. Now, let us see what the extract that has been prescribed for you contains. Because what has been prescribed for you is not the entire book. We only have a small extract where a student starts talking to the teacher and addresses the teacher. Let us see what it is all about. I am going to read through this lesson for you. Dear Miss, you won't remember me or my name. You have failed so many of us. On the other hand, I have often had thoughts about you and the other teachers and about that institution which you call school and about the boys that you fail. You fail us right out into the fields and factories and then you forget us. While giving a test, you used to walk up and down between the rows of desks and see me in trouble and making mistakes, but you never said a word. I have the same situation at home. No one to turn to for help for miles around. No books, no telephone. Now, here I am in school. I came from far away to be taught. Here, I don't have to deal with my mother who promised to be quiet and then interrupted me a hundred times. My sister's little boy, who is not here to ask me for help with his homework. Here, I have silence and good light and a desk all to myself. And ever there, a few steps away, you stand. You know all of these things. You are paid to help me. Instead, you waste your time keeping me under guard as if I were a thief. You know even less about men than we do. The lift serves as a good machine for ignoring the people in your building. The car for ignoring people who travel in buses. The telephone for avoiding seeing people's faces or entering their homes. I don't know about you, but your students who know Cicero, how many families of living men do they know intimately? How many of their kitchens have they visited? How many of their sick have they sat through the night? How many of their dead have they borne on their shoulders? How many can they trust when they are in distress? A thousand motors roar under your windows every day. You have no idea to whom they belong or where they are going. But I can read the sounds of my valley for miles around. 
the sound of the motor in the distance in navio going to the station a little late if you like i can tell you everything about hundreds of people dozens of families and their relatives and personal ties whenever you speak to a worker you manage to get it all wrong your choice of words your tone your jokes i can tell what a mountaineer is thinking even when he keeps silent and i know what's on his mind even when he talks about something else this is the sort of culture your poets should have given you it is a culture of the 9 tenths of the earth but no one has yet managed to put it down in words or pictures or films be a little humble at least your culture has gaps as wide as ours perhaps even wider certainly more damaging to a teacher in the elementary schools at the gymnastics exam the teacher threw a ball and said play basketball we didn't know how the teacher looked at us with contempt my poor children he too is one of you the ability to handle a conventional ritual seemed so vital to him he told the principal that we had not been given any physical education and we should take the exams again in autumn any one of us could climb an oak tree once up there we could let go with our hands and chop off a 200 pound branch with a hatchet then we could drag it through the snow to our mother's doorstep i heard of a gentleman in florence who rides upstairs in his house in a lift but then he has bought himself an expensive gadget and pretends to row in it you would give him an a in physical education the letter starts with the address of a student to the teacher where he says dear miss you don't remember me but you have failed many of us as i had said earlier on the teachers failed them failed the students and these students were forced to work in fields and factories without proper education and that is exactly how the letter starts that the teacher failed many of them into factories and fields but then he says even though the teacher doesn't remember him he definitely remembers her and he remembers this institution which is called the school where they were supposed to be educated and they never received the proper education he remembers how during a test time especially when they were asked to write a test the teacher would simply walk up and down the rows he wouldn't know the answer to the questions he would keep looking at her in a very questioning manner but then she would simply ignore him she was never there to help him or guide him and therefore he did not know what to write in the answer script he did not know the answers to the questions that were given for the exam and obviously he failed the situation at home was also not good as i said earlier these students belonged to the peasant families who depended mostly on agriculture and the background was not a very literate one and this was perhaps the first school that was set up in tuscany at that point of time the students came to school hoping to study but at home the conditions weren't good either that's what he says in this extract he says when he sits down to study his mother disturbs him she distracts him calls him a hundred times gives him small errands and asks him to do some work or the other when he is free of all that work and he starts doing his homework his sister's son comes and asks him to do his homework so there is no peace for this student even at home because there he has a lot of work to do then he talks about the school which is a good place for him to stay because there at least he has a desk of his own there is sunlight there is silence in the school but the teachers are not friendly the atmosphere is good at home there is a lot of work he is constantly disturbed by people at home for more and more work at school he says he has a desk the atmosphere is good his friends are there along with him to study but then the teachers don't teach him anything so what does he learn in school he doesn't really learn anything in school at all and this is what he accuses the teacher of the teacher never teaches him she never encourages him she never advises him on how he should study 
and that is his tragedy he continues saying that the teacher never knew anything about humanity around her he accuses her saying that she did not care about people around she lived in an apartment she always traveled in the lift she went up and down in the lift so that she didn't have to meet her neighbors she moved in the car so that she didn't have to talk to people who traveled in the buses she spoke to people over the telephone so that she didn't have to see their faces but then in this way she lost touch with humanity whereas he on the other hand knew who his neighbors were he knew their problems he knew their troubles and she was not anywhere close to what he felt for his neighbors she never knew who lived next to her so how could she understand his predicament how could she understand his problems how could she relate to him as a student because she never really came out of her cocoon to interact with the others and in the same vein he starts accusing the teacher he talks about her rich students who perhaps no cicero cicero was a roman author and orator but then he says do all these rich students really know the problems of life have they ever visited their neighbors have they ever visited the kitchen of their neighbors have they really understood the problems that the neighbors had have they ever really sat through with a patient in the dark night have they ever carried a dead body on their shoulders have they ever felt humane and love for people around them no and that is the same condition which the teacher has so he says the teacher is nowhere close to him the teacher cannot understand him the teacher cannot relate to him in any way at all whereas he on the other hand knows what happens around him even the silent valley communicates with him a mountaineer walking up the mountain even his silence is communicated to him he knows how many families live around him what are their problems he has always been there to share their problems he says this is what the teacher doesn't realize the teacher doesn't realize that he is a student and he is a normal human being he is a student who needs to be understood and that has not been provided by the teacher he tells her that he, she reads so much of poetry poetry should have given her some knowledge about life but then alas she never learnt anything from poetry either he wants her to be humble he tells her to be humble he tells her to talk to him properly he says when she is talking to workers she is very rude her tone is different she is very arrogant he tells her it is culture to treat people well it is culture to treat them with love with affection this culture is not written in any book this has to be imbibed this has to be there in us from the time we are born it has to come down to us from our parents and from our teachers when the teacher doesn't have this culture how does she expect the students to have and this kind of accusations that he gives to the teacher continues throughout this particular extract that we read then he goes on to talk about the games teacher the gymnastic teacher he says that when they were in the ground he just gave them a ball and asked them to play the basketball he never taught them the rules of the game he never taught them how to play the game he simply asked them to play he says how can the students understand how to play basketball when they are not taught and when they don't pass the test the teacher goes to the principal and tells the principal that the students didn't learn anything at all and therefore they should be failed and they should rewrite their test this is the kind of teachers that the students in the school of barbania had who never taught them anything who always failed them and this disheartened the students this discouraged the students the student says the gymnastic teacher did not understand his capability he could climb a tree single handedly take a hatchet leave his hands free and cut a 200 pound branch with ease and slowly drag that branch to his mother's doorstep now is he not capable of playing a simple game like basketball 
a person who could do so much of physical activity of climbing a tree and breaking off the branch and bringing to the mother's door he says he is definitely capable of playing basketball but the teacher never understood that the teacher never gave importance to that he kept failing him because he belonged to a poor family whereas if it were a rich student who had an exercising machine in the house that student always got an a grade that student always was appreciated by the teacher so it is class distinction it is class bias students belonging to poor families students belonging to the peasant class were not given any importance whereas students belonging to richer families always got a grades they were always encouraged and they were always asked to go ahead in life the letter to the teacher was written by country children who were teenagers and young they brought out their experiences in this book which was actually written in italian and later on as i said translated in various languages including english the moment this book came out it became a great hit people started reading it and they understood the problems that existed in italy at that point of time they realized the problems that peasant students or poor students were facing in the schools of italy lot of changes were required and lot of changes were needed to be brought about at that point of time this book had a unique style the italian readers at that point of time were reading very long sentences flowery language lot of adjectives that were used but then this book was a refreshing change this book was written in the language spoken by the people it was written briefly it was written to the point the language was easily understood by everybody and then it was appreciated by people all around the i in the book is actually all the eight students together who have written this book so the i represents all the eight students of the school of barbiana the u that is there in the extract is the teacher it could be any teacher the any teacher that taught them and didn't teach them well and perhaps they all failed because of her so the you in the extract is any teacher that came to their imagination this method of working as a team pooling their ideas together as a team was extremely encouraging they were able to put all their ideas and these ideas were supported with graphs it was supported with statistics and so on and so forth it was not just a small book it was a volume wherein the people could read and understand the problems that existed in the education system at that point of time and so it left an indelible mark in the minds of the readers it left an indelible mark in the minds of the critics and even today if it is read it and if it is critically analyzed if it is understood we see that this book has a lot of common with our education system also this book made a mark in the hearts and minds of the readers of course in the book we come across difficult words like cicero homer and so on and so forth but the boys gave very good footnotes they gave references to all the difficult terms that came in their book they made the book easy for everyone to read now let us see how this book can be related to our education system do you think we have good schools do you think students are getting properly educated do you think that there is a good infrastructure there every time we see in the television and we hear in the radio the kind of situation that prevails in the indian education system in the rural areas at least in the urban areas it is a better scenario where the students do go to school where they have a lot of schools to go to whereas in a rural area you perhaps have only one or two schools in your village therefore the scope of education narrows down a lot and therefore there is a migration of people from the rural areas to the urban areas to get more and more better facilities where education is concerned this book highlights all that it highlights the problems not just of the infrastructure but also of the teachers especially of the teachers more than anything else who is a teacher a teacher is a person who guides the student at school a teacher is like a mother at school a teacher is one person who should encourage the students at school a school is a home away from home it is a temple of knowledge it is a temple where 
young students are molded into future citizens of the world, future citizens of the country. And who molds these students into good citizens? It is the teachers. A teacher has a lot of responsibility on her shoulders. It is she who can with her love and with her perseverance and with her encouragement transform a young student into a responsible adult and a good citizen of the world and the country. This responsibility lies on the shoulders of the teacher. Let us understand, teachers make a vital force in any country. It is they who teach the doctors. It is they who educate the lawyers. It is they who encourage every student that comes to them. It is our responsibility to, to see that the students are well educated because education is not just about reading and writing. Education is about building a character. Education is about building a personality. Education is building a human being who is very confident of himself. Education is all about gathering knowledge. Education is something which is imparted to a student who in turn will give it back to the society. Therefore, the role of a teacher is very important and the responsibility of teacher is that much more. The letter to the teacher is perhaps one of the most strongly protested letters ever written by a student to his teacher. It should open the eyes of all the teachers around the world and make them realize their responsibilities so that they take stock of what they should do with their students. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this lesson as much as I have enjoyed teaching it to you. Thank you.